you guys are just stopping me, particularly from going in and using it. Yes. I'm, you guys are denying me service because of my assistive devices. That is correct. Part four of a multi-part series featuring Guilford County, North Carolina. Leslie Barbie works at the Guilford County Public Health Department in High Point, North Carolina. Leslie had two encounters with Mike in the public lobby of the Public Health Department. The first encounter was on January 13th, 2020, which was Mike's first visit to the health department. Lieutenant Bowen from Guilford County Security told Mike he couldn't record in the public lobby. You must turn off your video device. Then Leslie showed up and made the appropriate modification per the Americans with Disabilities Act. She facilitated Mike getting service. Is there an ADA coordinator here for the building? Is there an ADA coordinator? Disability no. coordinator? No. Oh, hi. But hi. Do you, do you have an appointment or do you need to make an appointment? I'm just trying to figure out what services are here and you know how, about, how people go about getting access to those services. Um, well, I mean, we have an appointment line. You can call and schedule an appointment or um, I'm one, any one of these um, uh, windows would be glad to help you with that. Okay. All right. Cool. What's your name? My name is Leslie. Leslie. All right. And you work here? Mm -hmm. What's your position here? I'm in Vital Records. Vital Records. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So uh, yeah, where do I go to talk to one of these people? Right here, this this window right here should be glad to um, help you with. You'll step right over here. Okay. All right. Right here. Okay. Leslie identified herself and stated she worked in Vital Records. The only other time Mike encountered Leslie was on February 4th, 2020. Leslie was not present in the public lobby for Mike's second visit to the health department, and on that visit, it seemed like the county was shaping up and the modification Leslie made on the first visit was still in effect. Security guard Dougherty facilitated Mike receiving services with no mention of the recording devices or instructions to leave. On February 4th, 2020, Mike asked for a supervisor or administrator to assist with identifying Robeson. Leslie approached Mike and asked who he was looking for. Mike told her and she identified herself as being over the building. Sorry, who are you looking for? Uh, an administrator or some kind of building manager. Okay, well, I'm, I'm over the building. Okay. My name is Leslie. Okay. Mike asked her to identify Robeson so he could redress his grievances with a complaint or with a criminal complaint. Can you and tell me the name of the gentleman that um, was over here on my right? He, he grabbed my... My property. This is, my our, this is our security, and this is our security. They're all our okay. security. Can you tell me the name, please? I'm not going to, but you feel free to ask them. Oh, I, I did. I asked him. He refused to identify himself after violating my uh, my property. Again, okay. I've asked you to Excuse stop recording. Me. Instead of honoring the standing ADA modification that she herself established, Leslie didn't assist Mike. She refused to read the name tag on the employee. Can you tell me the name, please? I'm not going to, but you feel free to ask them. She didn't stop there. Leslie ordered Mike to turn off his recording devices. I'm going to ask you one time to uh -huh. please stop recording right now. Again, okay. I've asked you to Excuse stop recording. Me. Mike informed Leslie that his recording devices are his assistive devices. I use these as uh, assistive devices. I understand your for assistive devices, but you modification. are recording if you don't turn your devices off. Your recording device, not your assistive device. These are assistive devices. Okay. Sir. If you don't turn. Mike asked Leslie if they had an ADA disability coordinator. Leslie said they did, but she wouldn't contact them. Okay. If you don't turn your recording Do you device have a, off. Is there an ADA you, coordinator, Miss Leslie? You need we to leave. We have an ADA coordinator okay. not in this building, but you have been told to turn it off. Leslie told Mike that the people surrounding him were all security. She didn't bother to inform Mike that one of the persons was law enforcement and that Mike could make his criminal complaint with the officer. Properties this, is our, this is our security and this is our security. They're all our okay. security. Can Leslie never told Mike to leave the building. In the district court trial and in the recent suppression hearing in Superior Court, Leslie testified that she watched the whole thing live on YouTube. She said she watched Mike enter, go to the fountain, go to the bathroom, and then take a seat. You're watching it online. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Mr. Nelson was interacting with whom? He had came into the building and was recording. Um, I, if I remember correctly, he came into the building, went into the restroom. He then stepped to the water fountain. Um, and at this whole time, he is recording. So we could see it. Um, he, he filled up a water bottle at the water fountain and then he sat down in the front lobby. Leslie testified that Mike didn't ask for services. 
She swore under oath that Mike had no official business in the public lobby. He was not there for any services. He had no appointment. You must have an appointment to be um, in the clinical department or WIC department or dental department. He was not there for any services. But it's a, it's a public facility, right? It is. Do people ever walk in there to make appointments? Yes. Do people ever walk in there to get condoms? Yes. Okay. Um, did Mr. Nelson uh, was there for one of those purposes, wasn't he? Nope. Right. Do you remember that he wanted directions to another, he had been recommended to go somewhere via the health department on a prior occasion? On a prior occasion, yes. And he was back to talk about that? He never mentioned that. As many of you know, Mike didn't activate the live stream until the unidentified man, later identified as Robeson, accosted him at the service counter. Do you have business here? Yeah, I'm trying to conduct it. Who are you? You don't need to know that. You just need okay. to Okay, well, you can't, you can't give people orders unless you identify yourself, so. Yes, I can. Okay, well, your orders you are invalid. Well, we'll see. Okay. Can, what kind of yeah, I'm just asking about the uh, mental health. I was oh, here the other day, yeah. and he when uh, help it's not in this right, I know I, I asked I asked that yeah, last yeah. time, uh -huh. and they directed me to a building, uh, and it was a private company. Is that the only mental health I here? I don't know if they're mental health. Okay, I so is, you don't. This is the Department of Health for High Point or for yeah, Guilford? For High Point. Yeah, yeah, we don't know them about men and health. They own their own. They do their own so stuff. You don't have that for. They're not part of the health department. Okay, you know, no mental health at all for health department. No. All right. What about contraceptives? You want you want a pack? Can we? Or do you just hand them out like yeah. uh, condoms and stuff? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We got in. We'll give you some, but that's all we got. All right, cool. We don't do nothing with men and health. Yeah, I know they directed me there. I didn't know if it was part of the Department of Health because I got there and they said it was a private company. It and, is. They're not, it, yeah, they're not part of us. They okay. Been, they've been gone for us for a while. It, all right, yeah, that's where I meant to come back and verify I went to the right place, you know? Cause yeah, I you did. Yeah, they're not part of us at all. They're not. All right. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. 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 Are you recording? Great, hey, thank you. Leslie also testified in the suppression hearing that she had encountered Mike three times at the health department, but couldn't remember the dates. This was my, um, third interaction with Mr. Nelson. And do you remember how many times you had actually um, made contact or interacted with Mr. Nelson before February 4th, 2020? I had had two interactions with him before this. Um, the, the first time that he came in, um, he was only there for a short period. He came in, asked a few questions about um, services, and um, and left. He was, it was, it was not an issue. It was a non-issue. But the second time he came in, um, we were aware that he was live streaming, recording, and um, I did um, ask him to leave as well as security. There was, um, you know, a whole lot of discussion back and forth between him and security and myself, uh, but he did finally leave the building. Uh, you you testified under direct that you had three encounters with me. Is that correct? Right. Uh, what what are the first uh, what's the first date that you you claim to have encountered me? It's been two years ago. I could not tell you those dates at this point. I would have to do a little research to find out. Leslie swore under oath that on a previous visit and the visit in question, she told Mike he couldn't record in the lobby, and that she told him to leave. But the second time he came in, um, we were aware that he was live streaming, recording, and um, I did um, ask him to leave as well as security. This was my um, third interaction with Mr. Nelson. And so um, I already knew he was in the building. Staff had already alerted me that he was in the building. Um, and we already knew that he was live streaming um, um, while he was in the building. So uh, at some point, I mean, I let security um, interact with him and handle it. 
And at some point, I guess he asked for me and I came out um, and just reiterated to him that he was not allowed to be recording in there and that he had to leave the building. On February 4th, 2020, Leslie alleged that Mike was violating people's HIPAA rights. We have clients here that mm -hmm. are here for medical reasons. Yeah. And you're violating their law, their, um, their rights. What right is that? Their HIPAA violations. On the stand in the district court trial, Leslie swore that the public health department sees all kinds of patients, patients with STDs and other conditions that people don't want to advertise. Just tell the court uh, why you were asking Mr. Nelson to either leave or cut off his devices. Um, again, because again, we have clients that come in for um, STDs and it's a violation for, for, for them, for their privacy. And we also have teenage clients that may be coming in that do not, and this was being streamed live um, for everyone to see so that, you know, if someone was there for an STD or um, family planning or whatever, a, a, even a teenager, and we have a teen clinic, they would have been seen in the um, health department along with um, any other um, medical information that we have that may be around that may violate somebody's HIPAA. Um, may have their information, their personal information that could have been seen. Leslie also testified that HIPAA doesn't apply to the public, but to the medical professionals. Uh, you testified uh, just a minute ago in direct examination that you were trained in HIPAA. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Does does HIPAA apply to the medical professionals or does it apply to the public? Medical professionals. Okay. So HIPAA doesn't apply to people that happen to be in the public lobby. Is that correct? Well, I'm sorry, but the medical professionals are responsible for the medical information that we have in the building. And if the public is out there, we have to keep that private and from public view. Right. Yeah. You, you testify that you guys make, you have steps to ensure the privacy of patients. You said you use uh, folders um, that, that are black or that are, that prevent people from seeing um, private medical information. You said you turn over private medical information. So those are the steps that you testified that you do. And if, if for some reason uh, one of your staff doesn't do that and a member of the public sees it, that would be a violation of HIPAA on your staff, correct? Correct. Leslie swore that there was a no recording policy in effect in the public lobby. Are people allowed to photograph or video uh, while they're inside the health department? Absolutely not. She also testified that the lobby has a security camera that Guilford County Security maintains. Any exceptions to that that you're aware of or that you know of? None that I know of other than other than security. Um, we do have a couple of security cameras in the building. But other than that, no. This video footage is releasable to the public under the public records law. Leslie read the sign posted on the door of the public health department while under oath. The sign states that no recording devices are allowed. It does not say no recording allowed. Leslie testified that smartphones are recording devices. Can you still hear me, Ms. Barbie? Yes. All right. Do you can you see the pictures? Somewhat, yes. Right, can you read what the what the signs say? Yes. Okay. We will, will you go ahead and please read what the sign says? Notice, no cameras or other recording devices allowed beyond this point. Okay. And is that a fair and accurate representation of the signage that was on the building on February 4th, 2020? Yes. Okay. Thank it's you. It's also in Spanish. Um, now, you testified uh, and during direct examination with the prosecutor that the health department does not selectively enforce that policy on people. Is that correct? What do you mean by selectively enforce? So the prosecution asked you earlier if, if you selectively enforce that policy and you said no. That's for everybody, yes. 
Okay. Is it enforced equally upon everybody? Yes. And how is that enforced? Well, if we see someone recording, they're told they have to stop or leave the building. Okay. Does the sign say no recording? I'm sorry. No, it does not. Okay. The sign says what? No, yes, it does say, I'm sorry. It says no cameras or recording devices. Okay. So it doesn't say no recording, correct? Check the asked and answered question. Okay. She went, she answered one way and then she answered another way. I don't, I want to know what. I'll take judicial notice of what the sign <laughs> says. Okay. So the sign says no recording devices. Is that correct, Ms. Barbie? Correct. All right. And do you enforce that on everybody that enters the building? Yes. Is a smartphone a recording device? It is. Okay. Do you have security stopping people when they come in and tell them that they can't bring their smartphones in the clinic? We do not tell them they can't take their phone in, but we do stop them from using it while they're in the building. Okay. But the sign does not say not to use it. It says that it's not allowed. Is that correct? Correct. Based on your knowledge and experience, is that a policy or is that a restriction that is selectively applied to certain individuals? No, that is a policy. We have a written policy. Leslie provided a four page document that she was using as a reference while testifying. Leslie claimed the document was the county's policy banning recording devices. Like the sign, the policy lacks any official state or county codification. The sign and the document could have been written up by anyone, and there is no cited authority for the public to verify the policy. Leslie testified that Mike flopped on the ground on February 4th, 2020. Um, boys put handcuffs on him, and he flopped to the floor um, and started screaming. Dougherty swore otherwise. He swore Boyce took Mike to the ground by force. The, the incident progressed to... Uh, Officer Boyce uh, telling him to stop resisting, and then at that point he was he was uh, placed on the ground in an attempt to still get the handcuffs on. Okay. Did Officer Boyce use force to get me to the ground? He did. Would you say that he employed a takedown maneuver to put me on the ground? Some of them. Okay. Leslie also swore that she and the health department was preparing for Mike's return. I um, had made sure that he did not have an appointment before he showed up that day. Um, we, we had been checking on him quite frequently and he had never made an appointment with our office. So there had been some um, interaction with him before. So we were trying to make sure that if he came back in, that we were prepared for that situation. What do you see and hear? How could Leslie see what Mike did live on YouTube when the YouTube live didn't start for several minutes? Was Leslie present in the lobby for all three visits as she swore under oath? Did she ever tell Mike he couldn't record at any visit prior to February 4th, 2020? Did Leslie ever tell Mike to leave the building at any visit? As someone claiming to be over the building in the public health department, should Leslie have called the disability coordinator to facilitate equal access for Mike? Should Leslie have called for emergency medical services while she watched a blind patron attacked by security guards? Is Leslie Barbie's testimony supported by the facts and evidence? Is it worthy of belief? Should she be allowed to testify in the upcoming trial before a jury? Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the continuation of this series as the plot thickens. De Oppresso Liber. Mm -hmm.